what event he would like to relive. It wasn't his own birth, but the birth of his child, Janosch. Please welcome Deep. Sarah at the Medleys. It must have been, it was just five minutes, but it felt like an hour. We were sweating really hard in our dark black robes and our hearts were thumping. We were not alone, there were at least 100 people, but we did feel like we were the ones, the only ones there. And as I, as I looked at her, she said, babe, I'm scared. Do they think we are terrorists? I want to get out of here. I said, no, just a few more minutes and you'll be out of here, don't worry. You know, smile can be a disinfectant in such scenarios. It can ease the tension between you and them, but I'm not sure if they could see a smile. And I knew that just when, if a couple of more guards passed by, they would spot that something is not right and they would spot us. And we'd be out of here in an interrogation room, a small, tiny, squashy room, and that would be done. How did we get here? It was supposed to be funny, not anymore, as if the joke was on us now. How did we get here? Let me rewind a few hours back. The morning of the story, it was our seventh day in California. Jackie and I, newly in love, first time, long distance relationship for a year. You could have listened to your song. <laughs> and we made it happen. We, I'm, I'm from India, she's from Germany. We said, let's just meet somewhere. And California it is. Makes sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing good. Crazy, stupid love. New love. And everything is amazing. We are cuddling and, you know, long time in bed waking up at four in the evening, having those pancakes. And today was a special day because she had decided to invite her friends from Germany to visit us on our holiday. And it was my day to be accepted in the clan. And as we were getting ready to pick them up from the airport, I said, hey honey, wouldn't it be cool if we just dress up crazy and, and surprise your friends? We'd have all good laugh. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe at just this desire to be accepted and be funny and witty and courageous boyfriend. Or maybe it was the fifth mimosa we'd had. And she said yes, happily. And before we know, we were on our way to the airport. We stopped at Party City. Um, I don't know how many of you are from the US, but if you know Party City, it's, it's, it's a store size of Aldi or Decathlon, but no clothes or no food. All the shelves are filled with confetti, decorations, costumes, wigs, all that party quirky stuff. And we were like teenagers, after school hours, into that store having a blast. We would just change dresses like a, a change artist on a stage, and we would just have laughs. At one moment we were peasant, and then Shrek, red-haired rock star, and we were having a laugh. We would you'd get out of the changing rooms, look at each other, take selfies, and our giggles would turn into laughter. And we were just having a blast. And maybe it was again the mimosa. <laughs> It must have been a 30th change and I was dressed in this black dark coat of a clerical, um, uh, of a church priest and she was dressed as a nun and I looked at the clock in the corner I was like, oh no, we are late, we got to run out of here. We grabbed whatever we could, some couple of wigs, some glasses, some other stuff and we were out of there, checked out and went to the airport straight. And before we knew, we were rushing through to the arrival gates with our clothes, with our change in our hands. And we just dunked under the, the, the waiting room, uh, waiting lounge chairs, laughing and giggling. I don't know, maybe we were just kind of waiting, well, how would it be a surprise that we would dress up? Maybe we were just fascinated by, you know, how it would look with the friends when they would be rolling on the floor with that surprise. Or maybe it was just, again, the mimosa, but we just couldn't help laughing so much. I got into my black gown of that uh, church priest, and she was dressed up as a nun in all black stuff as well. She fit my curly black hair and aged big uh, beard, graying beard. It was much bigger than this. If you would look at this, this would be bald uh, compared to that. And she had her red haired party dress and wearing a nun's veil and I draped it over her head, something like this. And she couldn't stop giggling. And you know, coming from Taylor's background, I take my character seriously. 
And I don't know what happened. I just kind of put that cloth in order to su suppress her smile. Just strap it around her. <laughs> in a gut decision, we decided I'm going to be the Arabic sheikh and she's going to be my pious woman, my Habiba, in her hijab. I'm not sure if she was convinced about the decision, but it was in remote size again, and we jumped out of the seats and came in the public view on the stage, not ready for her, undecided in this new role as a sheikh and a Habib, Habiba in her hijab. We were just walking down, rushing towards the rival gate, and then as we walked down, we, I remember these piercing looks at us of disdain and suspicion. And if people would pass by, they would just turn around and give us a second look, as if they suspected something was wrong. And of course, we didn't belong there, and we could see that. We stood out. And soon the mimosa was wearing off, and so were our giggles. The enormity of the situation was taking in, and we were standing right at the gate with 100 people around us in this hijab and our kameez, Arabic kameez. And I remember she looking at me, and these faces anxiously waiting for their loved ones with warm smiles. Soon they would look at us and they would turn pale, disapproving of our, our lack of ingenuity. And she said, babe, I don't feel comfortable. We need to get out of here. I said, babe, it's just a few more minutes. We'll be out of here. Don't worry. I didn't want this disapproving looks to take away this title of cool, courageous, witty boyfriend. Everything was at stake at this point in time. And just then, as we were waiting, the public announcement goes in. This is an announcement from Homeland Security. If you spot something suspicious, please call 911. No. And now I'm reconsidering my plan. Should we go to the toilet? <laughs> Just quickly change, get back into our at least approving dress of a clerical priest and the nun. That would be accepted at least. And as I was playing with this decision in my mind, a group of Homeland Security guys walked by and they stationed themselves a little bit, a few meters away. Nicely, casually positioned to have a look at us and pretending not to. And at that moment, my heart sank. My smile, the nervous smile dropped. And I knew at any moment they would come, us, come at me. And I'm in that interrogation room. This dream of a courageous boyfriend would be soon on its plane to India. And that's how Jackie would tell the story, how I broke up with my ex-boyfriend after our first holiday. And I, we were just reading at that, and, and, and I was so scared. I wanted to kiss her, and I wanted to hug her. But I was so scared to step out of this character of this Arabic sheikh and be that, that, that loving boyfriend. I couldn't. And just at that moment, two familiar faces walked by, and they passed us. And just like everybody else, they gave us a second look. And a sudden flush of energy came through our body. And with all the courage I could muster in my half-baked Arabic accent, I said, Marhaba. Habibi, <laughs> take a photograph for us. <laughs> Just say that, I said that, I said that. They burst out laughing as if they knew all along it was us. My wig came out, her niqab came out, and we hugged each other tight. And there we were, in this, in this accepting our friends from the air, visiting from Germany. Now, what started off as a prank became a long walk into somebody else's shoes. And we played witness to somebody else's world, which, is, which I would have never imagined. Jackie and I have long since laughed about the story every time we tell to our friends. But we've had similar experiences. She and I are walking hand in hand in India and being scrutinized as a mixed couple. Or in Eastern Germany, often looked with disdain. But they were not as hard as this one. I think it would be wrong to admit that, that you know, it's easy to walk in somebody else's shoes and, and know what their world is like. It was a mistake, I think. But I invite you to witness somebody else's world that intimately. Maybe that will help us make lives matter. Thank you. Frequencies